I'm Insomniac, and this is Death Wish Coffee. Now, some of you are probably watching this going, damn, you're late. Death Wish Coffee came out, uh, what, two years ago? Something like that. Whatever the case may be, this definitely isn't uh, new coffee. But I'm not late. I already reviewed this, but that was on another YouTube channel that I had. That channel is now no longer in existence. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. The other reason I'm doing this is because, if you remember, the last coffee that I reviewed was that military-grade coffee which was uh, another coffee that now claims to be the strongest coffee in the world that gets thrown around a lot. So some people brought up, oh, you should do a review on Death Wish coffee, which I tried to tell them that I already did, but the video doesn't exist. So yeah, I'm gonna have to re-review Death Wish coffee. Luckily, I do still have the footage from that old review, and there is a part of that I'm gonna share. You'll see why later. But in the meantime, let's re-review this shit. All right, well, let's start with the packaging. Uh, Death Wish Coffee comes in a box, which I think is pretty badass. And in terms of marketing, regardless of whether or not this really and truly is the strongest coffee in the world, they do a great job of getting their point across where you have the uh, skull and bones here for the logo, and then you have warning world's strongest coffee here. Then when you open the box, it is huge over here. I mean, they really do uh, get the point across. Then when you open that up, there is a bag of coffee inside which has the same logo. Not overdone, very simple. I always actually thought that this was a very good looking packaging. The color overall, the look of it, the like I said, the logo and everything's not overdone, but it definitely gets the point across. It's well done. Now this is another one of those coffees that recommends a uh, pretty high Brewing ratio, which obviously is partially where you're going to get that strength from. Brewing ratio on this coffee is two and a half tablespoons per six ounces. Adjust accordingly. For the sake of overall taste and quality, I'm going to brew it somewhere in between how I brew coffee and their crazy recommendations. This way you can actually taste the damn stuff and tell you what I'm getting, what I'm smelling, etc. Speaking of that, I need to go and actually brew some of this up. So I'll be right back. All right, I brewed up some of this Death Wish coffee. And uh, it's time to give you the scents and tastes and flavors and all of that. You know, the shit that I do. That's what we're going to do here is what I'm telling you. Gabish. Now, one thing I noticed last time and I noticed this time too, I'm under, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Ah, ah, ah. Outrageously bright lights. I practically feel like I need some sunglasses. And this coffee is still blacker than... I don't even know what the fuck is this black. It's blacker than tires. It's black. All right, well, scent-wise, it actually smells really good. It smells like really dark, bold, kind of strong coffee. Has a little bit of a spice to it, and then it kind of has like a charred earth scent to it. I don't mean that in a bad way. It doesn't necessarily taste like uh, somebody set Montana on fire, but it's got like a kind of almost burnt, roasted, soil and uh, heavy dirt type of scent to it. Doesn't smell bad though. Oh, well, let's taste it and see what we get. Hmm. Well, the first thing I noticed about this coffee is how thick and heavy the mouthfeel is. This is the type of coffee that, even as I'm talking to you here on camera still, I still taste and feel that coffee on the palate. It just really sticks with you. It kind of reminds me of like a dark porter or stout, the way that kind of thick beer sticks on the palate is the same way that this coffee sticks on the palate. Now with that said, the flavor actually is really, really smooth. Well, let's zoom in a little bit more on the flavors and see what we get. And as always, I like to reiterate on camera that obviously I'm reviewing this coffee black because putting anything in it is going to adjust the flavor. So this is just, it's black. All right, well that kind of heavy charred earth aroma that I got before, that is actually a flavor too. There is some chocolate in there, but not like a smooth, nice, desserty chocolate. It is like the blackest, darkest, 95% cocoa chocolate that you don't give to your kids type chocolate. There's some of that in there. There's a little bit of spice. I can't exactly tell what it is, but I can tell you what I'm getting on the finish, which is a uh, pretty somewhat bitter grapefruit. And I don't mean that necessarily negatively. I mean bitter the way a grapefruit's bitter. Oh, more fucking grapefruit. What? It's actually a nice complement to the other flavors. One thing I can tell you about this coffee for sure, and I remember this from the first time I reviewed it, uh, thinking the same thing, for a coffee that's supposed to be 
so incredibly strong and you would think that it's probably scary to drink. It's actually really delicious black. And I don't normally drink my coffee black. That's racist. I know some of you are gonna disapprove of that comment. Uh, I do usually put a couple of creams in my coffee. But uh, this is a coffee that actually even black, I do enjoy it just the way it is. You really don't have to add anything to it. But the big question here, of course, is how strong is the coffee? Because that's what Death Wish Coffee is supposedly known for, is for being the strongest coffee in the world. And here's what I can tell you. Now, I can't tell you on a scientific level whether or not this is or is not the strongest coffee in the world, but it is not the strongest coffee that I've had. There actually is one other coffee uh, that I've had, which I'm not going to ruin the surprise on camera and tell you what that is. I'm actually hoping to review it in the somewhat near future. But there is one coffee that I have had that actually, in my opinion, at least the way it reacted with my body, blew this away for strength. But outside of that, this actually is one of the stronger brews I've had. This will uh, do you right if you need to stay up for a significant amount of time to do it just about anything. And actually, this is where the clip from my old review comes in, the footage from that lost video. For those of you who haven't seen it, we drank the coffee earlier in the day, we did whatever we had to do, and then sometime in the middle of the night, ridiculousness ensued because we were still wired and wide awake. So um, I'm just gonna roll the clip. I'm the guy on the left that's wearing nothing but sunglasses and uh, a pool inner tube eating something out of a bag of dog food. Just watch the clip. So is it the strongest coffee in the world? I don't really know. Is it strong? Definitely. Is it worth drinking? I would definitely say yes, because like I said, even black, this is a very tasty, very enjoyable coffee. It's not just like your typical strong coffee that just kind of tastes like you're drinking mud and tar. This is a good, smooth, somewhat balanced blend. It has some good flavors to it. If I were to rate it on a scale from one to 10 Mike Tyson's, I would give Death Wish Coffee an eight. It's not the most delicious coffee I've ever had, but it is a good coffee and it is a strong coffee. So, like I said, 8 Mike Tysons. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure that you click subscribe, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment if you've had Death Wish coffee. Certainly want to hear from all of you. Also, if you want access to my monthly giveaways or my full cigar reviews or my watch reviews, you're going to need to go sign up at my Patreon page. The link is down there somewhere in the video description, so check that out. And I'll see you all next time. Oh, yo! Insomniac. 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 Insomniac.